you have to get up really early in the morning for this view. And not just because it's sunrise. Four hours in the car from Denver to get to this place in southeast Colorado. Four hours and a few minutes more, and you're in a different state. That's New Mexico, the top of those mesas, those, that, those cliffs that you see with the little snow line. The scenery here reveals just about every color. You, you can't really tell where the field stops and the pasture starts. Except maybe one. <laughs> this is way greener than it is during the season by any stretch of the imagination. Brad Doherty is outstanding in his field. <laughs> I love the game. I've never played a down of football in my life. Let me try that again. Brad Doherty is out standing in his field. Right now we are standing on uh, the Branson Bearcat football pasture field. Yeah, high school kids play tackle football on this. Yeah, it's a field in the natural sense of the word. But Brad loves this rundown field, and not just because he's athletic director at the Branson School. Step inside, and you'll see why it's so important to him. The town of Branson has 49 residents. He's one of them. I didn't even know Branson, Colorado existed until I met my husband, Brad. His wife, Jody, Mrs. Doherty, the science teacher. Ooh, a nice cold one. All right. She makes two. <laughs> That's hardly where the family reunion ends. John Doherty, and he's in the class of 1944, and his sweetheart, my grandma, was Joanne Horner. My dad, uh, Ben Doherty, I've got aunts and uncles on that side of the road. I have a sister in that picture and a sister in that picture. And then right above your head is, is my senior picture, class of 1994, back when I had hair. And that just gets us back to this generation. And then my oldest son, he done, and sometimes at school he'll call me Miss Mom. She's talking about Brody, okay. the oldest of the three Doherty boys and the school's starting quarterback. It's, it's not like growing up anywhere else and you're exposed to so much, so many different things than like you would in a big city. You know how big cities have lush green football fields? Not here. But when you do go other places that have grass, your cleats get a little bit of a shoe shine. The six-man football team that calls this field home is a mashup between the Branson School and Kim School 40 miles away. Every other team we play has a pretty decent, nice grass field. That's because every other team they play has more water. Everybody is either sitting on top of an aquifer, which we're not, or they're next to a river in the Arkansas Valley, which we're not, so. Branson gets its water from five springs, about 14,000 gallons a day. To water a new sod field, ideal circumstances, you'd use about 30,000 gallons of water a day. So obviously we can't water double of what we don't have. That leaves the football team with this. Uh, patchy, brown grass, dirt spots. Isaac Provost is a senior wide receiver who takes pride in his home field advantage. Hearing other people talk about it is definitely my favorite part of this field. Uh, they say, oh, this field is crap. How do you guys play on this? He would know. Besides dodging defenders, he has to avoid something unique to this field. I'd say within a 20 foot radius of me, there's probably a dozen to two dozen active gopher holes. They, they taunt me, it's, 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 it's a battle. It turns out Brad's problem was bigger than any gopher hole. So one of the coaches spoke up and said they were concerned about the field conditions here in Branson and they were no longer going to play. They refused to come and play uh, unless we made significant improvements to the field. No, I wouldn't say I'm a bad guy in the slightest. Uh, no, no, I don't think so. If the grass is always greener, well then coach Tragen Marquez okay, need one football. lives on the other side. Down. Sit. Hut. Coach Marquez and his Grenada High School football team form tackling helmets up. Played an away game at Branson in 2020. It's kind of like kids just playing in the back of a junkyard. Coach told his athletic director, well, he pretty much said WTF. What's this field? I took the picture of it on my phone and I sent it to him. I said, this this is what we're playing on. I, we need to write this up. It sounded a little like this. Um, it says upon his arrival, uh, upon his arrival at the field, he found stone pieces of cement on the playing surface. He wasn't the only one complaining to the Colorado High School Activities Association. Other schools use words like deplorable, less than adequate, unsafe. We got one more. Grenada's coach was the first to say it out loud. Get up, move it, let's go. During a Zoom postseason conference call. As far as like player safety, 
I don't think anybody was really looking forward to going there. That particular coach spoke up and then about six or seven others spoke up and expressed the same opposition and refusal to play here. Uh, I, I didn't want to see us going down there again or, or necessarily anybody. Completely caught me off guard. And I know it came across rubbed the wrong way, but I was angry, shocked, insulted, offended, all so of that. This is my hometown. Uh, I love the people here. I love the community feel. It would definitely suck a little bit to not play here. Their options? Play all their games on someone else's field or find money for new turf. So we went to YouTube. Football isn't just important to us seniors. It means everything to our community. It's hard to ask for money for sports. You know, when there are so many bigger things happening in our in our country and in our culture right now. Turns out it wasn't hard at all. 4,000 people from across the country have donated to make this happen. Almost a half a million dollars in three months is pretty awesome stuff. Consider the money first down. Second down, get the field built in time for the 2021 season. This side of the field, it, it was... Kent Hartman. It wasn't even square. Found the original field off kilter. It's off two inches. Once he found the field at all. In fact, I asked Brad um, on the phone, I said, Branson, Missouri. He said, no, Branson, Colorado. And I said, where's that? As Kent got a geography lesson, he returned the favor with some basic geometry. We came in and we squared everything up on uh, Pythagorean theorem, so the kids out there that think they're never going to use that in math class, they do. Help even came from people who know where to find Branson. They weren't going to let them play any more games here, so we decided, well, you know, we'll help out what we can. Andy Castillo put his money where his work is. And we volunteered our grandsons uh, play out here. We volunteered to build a, build all these parts, the goalposts, the scoreboard, announcer stand. Yes. Okay, here we go. Start it. All just in time for the home opener. Are you all from Deer Trail? You wouldn't think a six-man high school football game in far southeast Colorado on a 90-degree day would generate much traffic. There might be one spot where you can park here. Then again. Let's go, fellas. Let's go get them. Who thought the school could raise half a million dollars and build the field of their dreams one, two, three, one. without missing one home game? <laughs> on a day too hot to be watering a lawn, Branson didn't need to. Good job, Chris! Without dirt to kick around, Branson Kim had to find something else. We're playing good. Call it payback for all Andy's work. They're dedicating it right, aren't they? There, there it is. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah. Six man football often ends with basketball like scores. But this was just the first half. Math up there on the board says Branson is winning and is going to win today. Remember Mr. Pythagorean theorem? Hey, stick to your math class because you're going to use it someday. With proper care, he won't have to find Branson again for at least 12 years. Now they're getting a world-class field, so we're excited for it. It's called Caldwell Field, named for Brad Caldwell, the school's first coach and district's current superintendent. But in a way, maybe this field should be named for someone else. <laughs> no, uh, I don't think so. I've had some questions asking if they were, um, even some people saying, well, at least name the, the opposing sideline after you. So I really do thank him for being our villain. Uh, without him uh, speaking up for his players, we would not have done this. This, the home game that almost did not happen. It's the greenest thing for about 100 miles. The, the fact that I had the first passing touchdown on this field, I mean, is pretty awesome. And I threw it to my brother. Even with no dirt, no mud, the Bearcats still left their print on the field. Football on three, football on me. One, two, three, football! No one will complain about gophers or squiggly lines. With photojournalist Ann Herbst. Ever again. Marshall Zellinger. And that makes me smile. Nine News. It's beautiful. It's incredible. Incredible, and they deserve it. Not only the kids, but that town. I mean, uh -huh. you could pick up the energy just in Marshall's story. Yeah, incredible. They see it as, as almost kind of like a community gathering mm -hmm. place for years and years. So for football season and other things, it's just I don't know. It's remarkable. Um, and and we should say some of you at home probably are like, oh yeah, I gave five <laughs> bucks for that field. Uh, nine news viewers were some of the most generous donors making this happen. Uh, next word of thanks campaign. 
raised $82,000 to help build Branson's Field. That is incredible. The Bearcats were 2-1 and one at home this year and 6-3 and three overall. We wish we could say that they're playing in the six-man state championship game tomorrow, but sadly they lost in the first round of the playoffs.